Namaste yogis. Here we are. This is my first test of recording via Zoom to offer to my students who can't go to studios for the time being. So we're just going to start with a little bit of Qigong, just some easy movement. The thing I love about Qigong is the mindset is one of nonviolence. So we move into our edges fluidly. So you might say, well, that's my edge, but no, maybe your edge is there. If you let your whole body be involved in all the movements, there's an attitude of inner smile of non-judgment. You move with fluid breathing. I'm not going to cue the breathing as uh, much as I do in vinyasa yoga for this first section, but I just trust you that you are breathing. <laughs> in time with your movement. So you're always, there's always an inhale going on or an exhale going on. You're listening inside, but you don't have to be one movement for one breath. You could explore doing two or three movements for an inhale, two or three movements for an exhale, um, half of a movement for an inhale. Just keep that fluid breath awareness. So we'll start with the feet together, standing tall in Tadasana, and then put a little bend in the knee. Inhale the arms up. Fold at the elbow, and then exhale, ground the energy down the spine. Take a little step, about six to eight inches, and interlace your fingers, and then press the palms down, sweep the arms up over the head. And so we're stretching both upward and downward, a little soft, springy knee, weight even on the feet, and pushing up through the wrists and elbows. But there's space around the neck by rotating those triceps forward. So you're in a full extension, but you're not straining into it. You're just exploring it with curiosity. And then with a slow inhaling, just see how far your body comfortably revolves. And be sort of full body aware. Notice what's happening on the placement of the feet. Notice what's happening in the spine and the hips. Keeping the fluid breath. Notice what's happening in the ribs the shoulders and the jaw and the eyes. You notice that when you relax into an edge, you can go further. So I, well, there's my edge, and then I go, no, I can soften more into that edge. And that's an interesting thing to learn about your body, that it's affected by your attitude of how you approach things. Wow, surprise, surprise. So we come back to this central position of grounding that energy into the spine, down into the earth. Then again, the little step. And this time we'll press one hand up and one hand down. Spiraling through center, one hand up, one hand down. Just exploring that sensation of flexing the wrist up, flexing the wrist down, and revolving around that central axis, being in a fluid flow. This little sequence we're doing is called the Eight Pieces of Brocade. It's an ancient Qigong sequence. Many feel that if you do it regularly, you'll stay in perfect shape. And those of us that think we have to strain to have gain might resist that notion. <laughs> but certainly adding it to your routine is a wonderful little warm up. So bring back to your center position. I'm going to take a bigger step so that I can keep you in the screen. I'm going to step a little this way. I'm picking up my right foot. So you can pick up your left foot and mirror me, or you can pick up your right foot and be on the opposite side. I leave that to you. But I'm always going to start with my own right leg. And we'll step way out to, this is called horse stance in Qigong. And we'll reach across. And this is pulling the bow, shooting the arrow. Stretch the chest open, flex the fingers, and your gaze is out over those fingers. Again, we're moving fluidly, noticing the sensations that arise into your awareness. Without any judgment, just curiosity. Then we'll do the other side, so just fluidly reaching, pulling, shooting. Reaching, pulling, shooting. Let your legs go with you. Your hips pulling, shooting, 
reaching, holding, extend, open, step, and ground. Again, we'll take the little step of the soft knee. Now this movement is very subtle. We just bring the hands to around navel level, palms up, and just rotate from the elbow and shoulder, palms down. So you're trying to get that external rotation in the shoulder. And the head revolves right on the top of the spine with relaxed eyes. Relaxed jaw and relaxed breath. So you can take this time to kind of explore what's your movement range, your comfortable movement range in the neck, where we hold so much accumulated tension. Now bring some ease there. Notice that if you let your eyes drift further, around, your body can go further around, your head can go further around. Everything's connected. And you're also gently warming up that shoulder joint. And we'll take one more. And coming back to our center bounding position. Now we'll take another big step. So again, I'll scoot over, lift the right knee, left knee is bent. Step out as wide as you can. Establish your horse stance, hands on the thighs. Left shoulder comes across toward the right knee. Let the head relax as you swing like an elephant trunk to the other side. Facing that way, come up, lift the chest, and then around and up. Around and up. Exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. Stay in that nice, knee, deep knee bend, making sure your knees and your feet are at the same angle. This is our last one. And you're going to take a big step. So just pull your hips over your standing leg and ground your energy here. Then again, we'll take a little step back to our six to eight inches stance and take your hands just below your belly, just below your navel, slide them around to your kidney area in the lower back, just at the base of the ribs, and then down the back of the leg to the ankle, reach the arms forward, Bend the knees a little deeper and push into the feet to rise up. So we'll just take this, each one of these movements corresponds to meridians in Chinese medicine. This one is kidney bladder, kidney bladder, down the back of the body, up the front of the body, down the back of the body, up the front of the body. Let's call that our last one. And again, grounding the energy. One more slightly big stance, not as big as the last two big stances, but bigger than the one, the small stance. And we'll just sort of take a soft punch, don't squeeze, don't think of anything aggressive. Extend it out, spiral it in. And your ribcage is revolving around your waist. And you're stretching your chest open by pulling that shoulder back that elbow back, but make your movements like chewing gum or silly putty. Just where's my edge? Maybe it's further. What can I let go? What can I do to make that movement more luxurious? And then the last one, pulling in. And then, our very last movement in this eight pieces of brocade is simply lifting up onto the balls of the feet, hovering there, and then dropping the heels. Stimulates and grounds the energy we've cultivated through the entire body, activates the lymph system, which moves toxins out of our body. Up, 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 up. Hover. Drop. Up, 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 up. 
hover. And then we do it fast. Drop, 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 drop. Walk on that little vibration through the body. Drop, 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 drop. These are simple movements you can incorporate and do if you don't have time to do a long session in the mornings or in the evenings before bed. It's wonderful to prepare for sleep. And then our last grounding movement. Very good. Now we're going to take some work with the hands. These, you know, we underestimate the toes and the fingers and how our energy is affected because it goes all the way to the fingers and toes. And this is why we work a lot with Padabandha, activating the arches of the feet when we're standing in our postures, or in fact, when we have the leg in the air. And our hands as well are never just unconscious. So you use their, we really work on grounding them when we have weight on them, spreading them evenly through the hands. So these movements are for our hands. Push through the heel of your hand. So you're flexing and lift your chest. And then contract your belly, rock back in your heels just a little bit and flex your wrists. So here's your opening and scooping the belly from below the pubic bone, from behind the pubic bone to behind the navel, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. Now we'll take this contraction at the wrist and rotate the arm from the wrist through the elbow and the shoulder, and then from the armpit to the elbow to the wrist, opening and full rotation. As you do this, maintain the flexion in the wrist and those fingers curled in. Moving with breath, extended at shoulder level, push out, spread your fingers, pull them in, exhale. Opening with the chest, pull in, exhale. Opening with the chest, pull in, exhale, rotate. From the armpit, open, inhale, keep the flexion of the wrist, exhale. So one thing that's beautiful about this, not just working the meridians that go into the fingers, but it also is stimulating the cervical nerves, opening out, contracting in. And you might start to feel it because these are movements we're not used to. The more you breathe, the less your muscles will kind of spasm them up when you're doing something new, especially Open, now pull in, rotate, without letting your shoulder rotate. From the armpit, rotate open, lifting the chest. Exhale, full rotation. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And then make a full fist, rotate it to the armpit, rotate it open and spread your fingers. Full fist, and the other way, and open, inhale, exhale, inhale, and soften down. And your arms might be ready for a break there. We'll take a slice, of, so notice my hand is flexed. I'm gonna rock a little bit into the side of my foot as I take a diagonal, lifting the chest, and slide back the way I came. And then lifting the chest, and that's just an interesting stretch. Inhale, and you're noticing as you go through your feet, back to the heels a little bit when you're contracting through center. And by contracting, I mean this lower belly. And as you take the arm up, you're sliding a little bit to the outer edge of the foot. Now, make sure you don't hunch your shoulder, but keep that space around the neck and come back. And inhale and come back. Now circulating prana through the whole body. Big stretch, up, flex, and take it back. Inhale, up, flex, and take it back. I'd like to uh, mention that these movements that I'm doing, I learned from James De Silva, who's a wonderful teacher. Um, his system is called Garuda Yoga. Now we'll just take it to this position here, and now we'll isolate the fingers again. First pulling the thumb towards you, then the index, then the middle, then the ring. Pinky. And again, thumb, isolate, middle, ring, pinky. Make a mudra and take a full rotation of the wrist. 
twist and flex. And then the other way, full rotation and flex. Middle, full rotation and flex, full rotation and flex. Ring, full rotation and flex, full rotation and flex. Pinky, full rotation and flex, full rotation and flex. Soften down. Again, you can feel that, oh yeah, I'm ready for a little break there. <laughs> Slide up just like we did before, but this time into a side bend. And then let your lower rib, your, your uh, floating rib, pull you out the other way. And then use your belly to contract to center. Inhale, up, side, nice and juicy. And center, up, side, and center. Inhale, same, inhale, exhale, same, exhale, center, and open. Shoulders forward and back, elbows, fists, rotate, open, palms together. Shoulders down, chest up, and elbows high. So don't let them drop down as we isolate the wrist again. Thumb, back of hand, Pinky side of hand and palm. Thumb, back of hand, pinky side of hand and palm. Thumb, back of hand. And notice I'm sort of swaying my hips as I'm doing this as to help me keep sort of a relaxed attitude. And I'm gonna reverse it so it's pinky, back of hand, thumb, palm. 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 Watch the elbows turn the job. Other hand, thumb, back of hand, Pinky, palm, thumb, back of hand. It's attempting to articulate through each of those positions, keeping the shoulders down, the breath fluid, a little smile can be very helpful. And then it's pinky, back of hand, thumb, palm, pinky, back of hand, thumb, palm, pinky, back of hand, thumb, palm, pinky, back of hand. Um, now we take a smooth rotation, smooth. Thumb, 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 and thumb. Pinky, 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 and pinky, other side. Thumb, 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 and thumb. And pinky, and pinky, and pinky, and pinky. And now we flick, 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 leading with the thumb, thumb, thumb. Thumb, 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 going through that flexion. Thumb, 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 thumb. Pinky. Breathing. Elbows up, shoulders down, little smile. Sway the hips. <laughs> you can dance around, you can do whatever you want. And then shake it up. Good. Interlace your fingers with your elbows into your waist and just do some nice releasing movements, making your figure eight with your wrists. And then reverse it. And then take a little slower at shoulder level and let your whole shoulder and upper back be involved and you're really lubricating through all the joints, your finger joints, your wrist joints, your elbow, and your shoulder. Other way, wah, 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 wah. I love this movement. And the next one is really fun too. And it's the last we'll do with this sequence. We'll present the hand, cup the fingers, and then fold and flex, fold, and flex, fold, and flex. And you'll get right into the armpit, right into the shoulder, right into the armpit, right into the shoulder, presenting that. And you could take it to different angles if you like, up or down or forward. Let's start with the other hand. Present the palm, cut the fingers, and crumple and stretch, crumple stretch, crumple, and then stretch, crumple. You don't have to do these variations, you can keep it right to the front. Crumple and stretch, crumple and stretch. You might be feeling this now, it's normal. It's a lot of work, really, that we just don't pay attention to the, these joints in the arms, elbows, shoulders, wrists, fingers, all that much. And then just shake it out again. Good, big shoulder circle again. Pull the elbows up and then the fist. Pull the hands into the armpit. Big yawning circle with the elbows. 
big circle with the arms, exhale, and take it back. Now I'm going to take the slicing movement again and continue right through as so we're doing a backstroke. And inhale, and backstroke. And inhale, and backstroke. And inhale, and backstroke. And then we'll sweep back and forward. So you're tuning kind of a rounding, scooping. Let your hips come forward, round, scoop. Hips forward, round, scoop. Hips forward, round, scoop. Both arms, not quite have room there, come all the way down. So easy forward bend. Let your knees be a little bit. Just hang here for a moment. And then bend your knees enough that you can get your hands, you could have blocks here, or come to your fingers. But if you can have your hands flat, lift your chest, bend your knees, exhale, fold. Just find your edge and breathe into it. Again, with that, even though now we're not doing Qigong per se, you can keep that attitude of finding the soft edges, not jamming or forcing or straining, uh, or heaven forbid, judging. <laughs> and then we'll Bend, lift the chest higher, take the arms like wings, rise, and exhale. Take the hands to the heart. Little sequence just warming up for our sun salutations. We'll inhale and rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, contract the, the elbows down with subtraction. So you're engaging the muscles in the upper back. And step forward with the right foot. Just a little lunge, interlace your hands. Shoulders down, together. Bend the back knee, flex the front foot, and stretch over. Just wherever you can. Stretching the shoulders, the wrists, the hamstrings, and the ankles. Come up. Center on the feet, release the arms, reach up. And then just as you lower your heels, take a little bend in the front knee. Tap your fingers between your shoulder blades and lift your chest. It's like a tiny warrior one. And then up again. And now we clasp the hands to shoulder level, bend the back knee and pull, rounding the back, getting a stretch to the upper back especially. Stand up and close. Other side, reach, contract, clasp and step, bend and flex the front foot, fold. Rise, release the hands and balance in the feet, and up, 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 up. Lower the heels, palms together, bend the front knee, lift the chest, fingers between the shoulders, Back to center, interlace, pulling the arms to shoulder level, bend the back knee, and round forward. Inhale, come on. Exhale, step together. Very good. You might want to have block, uh, two blocks handy for the next sequence. Let's inhale, and you'll have them on either side of your mat where you can reach them. Take your halfway pose. Ardha Uttanasana, inhale, lift the chest. And keeping the chest lifted, just step back with the right leg to a runner's lunge. Think of dropping this side of your sacrum lower and lifting your right thigh up, drawing the inner thighs together, zipping the lower belly, sternum forward, shoulders down, hands on the floor or blocks, and then sink both hips down, maintaining all of those actions, and feel that nice stretch through the big toe mound of the back foot. And then round, but pull it back, flex the front foot. Seesaw back and forth, inhale, exhale. Inhale, this time exhale, and sweep it into a twist. Inhale, reach it forward. And sweep it into a twist, and reach it forward. Full circle, hand to the floor, flatten the front foot, pull the right leg 
back toward you. So you're balanced between both feet in a lung called Parsvottanasana. And just relax over your body. So we'll just be here for a few breaths, trying to square the hips. You'll pull your left hip back, push your right heel back, lengthen your spine. Maneuver your navel more toward the center line of your left thigh. Activate the left kneecap and lengthen your left big toe. Lengthen your breath, most importantly, and lengthen your spine. If you need to have the hands on blocks, of course, please do. And you can put a little bend in the front knee also if you need it. And you might be here. You might need to be up even higher, depending on your flexibility. Now we're all going to lead with the chest and come to standing and move right into a dancer pose. Swivel your back leg parallel, so you come onto the ball of the foot, and then bend both knees to shift your weight onto your front leg, and bend, take your right heel towards your right buttock. With your right hand, reach back and hold the inner edge of the foot, and then lengthen the tailbone down. Lengthen the left arm up. Now you can stay right here. You can stay here for a couple of breaths until you feel secure, and then explore going into Natrajasana, which is a back bend and a heart opener and a balance. So rather than being oriented toward how far you can go into the pose, notice what you feel as you breathe and play the edges between effort and inner listening softness. I'm not gonna go too far into this because I don't have this plant here. <laughs> then we're just going to bring the knee up to the chest, bend the standing leg, wrap, double wrap if you can, big toe on the mat is an option. Take your right elbow under and either hug your shoulders or wrap your wrists and squeeze the shoulders down. Keeping the breath nice and fluid, feeling that internal gaze of the ego, Garuda. And then just coming back to standing. Let's take the hands to the heart here and just for a moment pause and reflect how lucky we are to be healthy and doing our yoga. Even if we might seem a little isolated from our kula, our community, we have our inner practice, which saves us day after day after day after day after day. Yoga is magical. It's wonderful. I'm so happy that it's in my life. Let's take the other leg. The other leg will go up to the toes first. We'll lower the heels, lengthen the spine, cascade over. Lift the chest. Step back with the left leg. Find the action of dropping the right sacrum, lifting the left thigh, squeezing the inner thighs to midline. Lengthen the sternum forward and push back through the big toe mound with the left foot. And then drop both hips, if you can. So breathing there and just enjoying the stretch into all those little hard to get to places. And then, as my teacher Lauren Peterson always said, hard to get to places. Find them. And, and here's where hands on blocks can be handy. And then we'll circle the arm and slice it back, thumb up, and circle. And back, thumb up, and circle around, head to the mat. Flatten the front foot, scoot, bounce on both feet. Parsvottanasana, here we are again. Working those hips square. Lift the right thigh, quadricep knee. Ground the right big toe. Make some space between, around the sacrum around the tailbone, slide the left inner thigh back and ground into the left outer heel and big toe. Wide across the upper back, navel to center of front thigh, breath flowing deeply and freely. This is a big stretch. And like I said, you could have hands on blocks, on your shin, wherever you need it to be. Then we'll lift the chest to come up. Pivot onto the ball of the foot. That's your springboard to bring your weight onto your front foot. 
always moving slowly, very deliberately when you're going between poses and especially into balances. I'm going to step back a little bit so I have room to explore this pose without disturbing my friend here, the Easter Lily. <laughs> and breathe. Hmm. King of the dancer poses, the dance of Shiva. Within the wheel of time, on the head of ignorance. And then if you'd like to begin to explore, uh, feels to open it up. So you're pushing back with the foot into the hand, forward with the sternum, and down with the standing foot. Breathing suppleness into the heart, active into the leg, finding that bow shape, and then knee to chest. Loop, breath, and drop down with the hips and up with the heart, down with the shoulders. In with the focus, in with the breath, Garudasana. And simply unwind. Now it's a good idea after all of that to do a little shake out. If I was allowed to play music, oh, la, la, la. <laughs> here's why I would put on some dancing music, some happy tempo music, some expressive music, and give everyone that chance to, and feel free to put some music on now in your own space, and just move around freely, pause the video, do a little dance, get everything <sighs> draining out. We hold on to so much yoga, so much about letting go. Let it go and let it go and let it go. Every day, cleaning out, body, mind, spirit, detox. <laughs> and it's spring, it's time to detox. So, and then I like to do the little Qigong movement. I'm slapping my kidney area with a loose wrist. It's like yoga, empty sleeves. Empty sleeves, Hollywood wrap. Just from the momentum of your body, the arms are wrapping loosely. And bring it back to center. Okie dokie. Let's do an A series of variations thereof. I wonder if I want to stay this close to the wall. Oh, I want you to be able to see my whole body and finding the right spot in the room in the apartment is kind of challenging. <laughs> this is my kitchen, believe it or not. So inhale, reach out. No back bend. Exhale, bend the knees as needed to go into your Uttanasana. This is a lift. So you're creating length in the spine, space in the throat, external alignment in the shoulders. I'm going to step back to this plank pose for three breaths, lifting the navel, pushing back through the heels, lifting up with the belly, forward with the sternum, forward with the eyes, even across the feet and hands. And then I take the knees down because of shoulder injuries. Heart is open like a cobra as I lower, looking forward, Swoop through to a cobra, hips down, tops of the feet down, tailbone down, elbows in, and pull back, curl toes, lift hips, push back in to your down dog. Come a little forward here, so I'm better light. You want to scoop out the lower belly, don't let your lower ribs pop, keep them contained. Bend both knees, both elbows. Push your thighs back, push your hands away. Drop your elbows straight down under your shoulders toward the midline of the mat. Keeping the weight even on the hands. So it's a good movement to really strengthen the shoulder girdle for arm balances and weight supporting, such as chaturanga. And then we'll take the right elbow Toward the floor and the left knee will bend. And stretch both. Left elbow toward the floor, right knee will bend. 
and stretch both. Now I'm going to take my right all the way down, it means I have to put a little bend in the left as well. Lift the left heel. Climb it up, 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 up. You can stay here or lift onto the ball of the foot and shift forward. More weight on that shoulder. So lift out of the shoulder by pushing down the forearm, lifting up the belly. And when you're ready, push both arms straight, stretch the leg to the sky, and simply close it back. The downward dog. Same side, of, same thing, other side. So left elbow down, little bend in the right. Right heel to the buttock, climb it up. Stay here or come a little more forward. Lift up out of your shoulder by pushing down the forearm, lifting with the belly, stretching the leg up. Don't forget to breathe and relax your neck. Push both arms straight and close, pressing back into the feet. And then we'll just walk up. You can hop if you want. I'm not hopping for the same reason that I'm not doing my chaturangas with straight legs. I am being very careful of a shoulder that's healing very nicely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Learn the hard way not to push it. I want to use this body to do yoga until the end. <laughs> Reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart. So that was our first foray through sort of an interesting <laughs> series on meditation. We'll take another variation. Inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, exhale, one exhale, just step back and low. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg sweeps up, let the hip open, keep the weight even on the feet, and you can take even a bigger hip opening if you'd like. This gets into the psoas. It's a nice stretch for the side ribs too. Then we'll level the hips, scoop, scoop the belt, lift the belly, and look forward to you like a little cobra action going on in your upper body. And see if you can balance. Now you might just take the hand up. You might take it to the lower back. Some of you might hold the foot. <laughs> and then go back for the stretch. Look onto the ball, the standing foot, and round the spine as you bring the knee forward, slide your chest forward, and then take this movement where we take the knee to the inner elbows. Nonchalantly with a smile, really move from your core, and then circle back. Now we'll step it all the way to the front, and you know, I'm gonna demonstrate. If it doesn't come all the way, no worries. Use your hand to pull it up. We're coming to crescent. Crescent's like runners lunge only, now we have the shoulders up over the hips. Pull the right hip back, steer the tailbone down, so anterior tilt. Reach back to the inner thigh, arms up. Soft wristed elbow, dropping the arms behind the ears. Watch that you don't collapse in the low back or pop your ribs. Don't contract them strongly, but keep them contained and emphasize softening around the heart. Deepening the breath. Softening into the breath. Stretch up, plant the hands, looking forward, not down. Step back and lower. Cobra or up dog, and downward facing. Left leg goes up. Lifting out of the standing hip, firming the standing thigh. Stretching the sky to the leg to the ceiling, like a split. And then you can take the heel to the buttock and open it up a little more, getting into the psoas, getting into the side roots. And then keeping the knee bent, square your hips off level to the floor and lift your belly. Lift your chest. 
Concentrate on lifting in the navel, which is your center, and see if you can balance. Keeping the, the breath smooth. The hand down, stretch it back. Inhale, onto the ball of the foot, side forward. Elbow, 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 elbow. Step it all the way to the front. Rise up. Pull this left hip back, angle the tailbone down, push the right thigh straight and up. Soften the heart to the sky and breathe. forward, step back and lower, inhale, let's take a little rest in child pose, done a lot of concentrated effort here, <sighs> always encourage deep sighing, helps to release stuck energy, let your breath really roll through like a wave. Take this time to connect, reconnect, deepen your connection to yourself. Let go of any judgment and be thankful that you're here in the moment with yourself alive and well. Things come into perspective sometimes. And it's an important perspective to hold all the time, but how valuable each moment, each day, that we're healthy, <laughs> alive, Come back to your hands and your knees. Curl the toes under. Go back to your downward facing dog. Spiral those shoulders open and lengthen the index fingers away. Deep breath along the spine, stretch it out, and then hop or walk front to inhale into your flat back. Exhale, fold. Hands up to stand up. Balance on the feet, reach up, up, up. And strip to the heart in gratitude. We will take now a B series, sort of um, with some variations starting off, but moving toward a D. I'm going to face this way right now because I'm going to do the right leg first. Sit back in your chair, favor your heels, and lift your belly off your thighs, and then spiral and Press into the palms to line up your sternum with your thumb. Sink your hips level, lengthen your spine, and breathe. The longer you breathe, the more you can bring up the belly, the more you can twist. And then you look down, pick your left foot up, step it back to a lunge. Continue to twist here. And if you want to take other variations, take the left arm down, and the right arm open, and the right arm by the ear. Stretching, stretching, stretching. Go to take a breath. And once again, we'll shorten the stance. Shift back into the heel and then the back body. Lift the chest to inhale, rise. Take the left arm up. We're going into a revolve triangle, Pravrita Trikonasana. So Make sure your hips are square and you're balanced on your feet. Go ahead and spiral before you and go over and to the flat back. Hand to the shin or the floor or a block. Stack your right shoulder over your left and relax into it. Feel the sturdy base go underneath the back heel, lengthen through the heart. Draw the shoulder blades away from the ears. Relax your face. <laughs> relax your breath. And we lower, bend, step back, lower, lift the chest, downward facing dog, our wrist pose, deep breaths. It's very interesting uh, teaching to a video screen with the idea that someday someone's gonna watch this. 
I really prefer working with a group. <laughs> I know you're going to be out there, so I'm imagining what your issues might be. These are probably the same as mine. Walking, if you did. Or I've been teaching long enough to know what a lot of the common issues are. Mostly the habit of being distracted, <laughs> the habit of not breathing. And that's why I have to stay here. I'm going to turn around again so I can have room. Inhale and drop your hips back into your chair. Lift your belly off your thighs. Snuggle down, spiral into your twist. Pressing the palms to rotate the chest open, sinking the hips down. And breathing, you might wanna take this position here as well. In which case you can step back from here. Keep your balance, step back. And maybe take the Pabrita Parsakanasana. Keeping the breath nice and fluid. Lower the arm. Frame the foot. Scoot the back leg in. We're back to Parsakanasana in preparation for going into the twisting triangle. Balance the spine and hips here. And then leading with the chest rise. Center. Any foot adjustment would happen now to make sure you can square your hips and shoulders. And then spiral. Just like we did in the Qigong, spiraling around the center. Push into the back heel, lengthen. Take your hand wherever you're going to put it. I often work on the shin so I can maintain tabletop. And hold, you want to be able to get this open chest position. And the breath flowing steadily in the back of the throat. So your barometer is always this feeling of inhaling, exhaling calmly. You know, it's not that easy when you're doing poses that are challenging for you. Let's face it, most of them are. And then we'll bend the front knee, step it back and lower. Inhale, pull the belly in, curl the toes, stand on the hands and feet. Adho Mukha Svanasana, resting pose, balancing pose, grounding the hands and feet, lengthening the spine, sending those breaths to every tissue, every cell, purifying all the channels, nadis, arteries, veins, Limp, inhale, exhale. Feet together. Let's drop into a chair again, dropping the hips down and back to feel the chest up. And samastiti, standing and balance. Now we'll just flow through a regular B series through the warrior one. And remember, we did that tiny little baby warrior one in the beginning of class. So, <clears throat> So I'm a little bit bigger now. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Same foot, same exhale, foot forward, lock the back foot in. Inhale to the left. And the left. So one ball of the foot. So, inhale, come up, plant. Back a little bit. Exhale, left foot, back heel. Lock it in, inhale. Up and down. Swivel on the ball of the back foot. Step back and lower. Inhale. Five breaths and down. Each breath is lengthening the spine a little more. As you feel yourself opening up, you can walk your heels back further, try to hide them from view, lift your kneecaps. Press the top of your calf forward, 
even as you press the top of the thigh, going back. We're going to come to the knees now. I think it's time to go to the floor. We'll do some hip opening at the floor. Starting with Janya Shirsasana. And to prepare for that, we'll take staff. So it's like the Tadasana of the seated sequence. You're already in a forward bend. So if you're tight this morning, you could have a little bend in the knee. Or you could elevate your hips on one of your blocks. Lift up. Hinge at the pelvis. You keep your spine long. If you can grab your big toes and go for it. Otherwise, wherever your hands land, that allow your chest to stay open and your, long, your neck to be long, your face and your breath to be serene. Drishti, I focus big toes. Focus out, pulling back so you're not punching. Then it's all about how you breathe, sliding your tailbone to the wall behind you, hollowing out your belly when you're exhaling. Listening inside to your body. Leading the chest, lift up through a flat back, and fold Janu Shirsasana. So it's a little bit of a twist because your knee is way open. If it's way in the air, put your block under there. As you start to move forward, the weight wants to move into the front of the knee, so you want to keep your weight into your buttock as you go forward, and it may limit how far you can go. It does for me. So we'll start lengthening up, 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 out of the pelvis, keeping this leg sturdy, toes pointing up. If you can grab the foot, the foot. Otherwise, frame it, frame the shin. And again, it's about the breath, breathing down into the belly, and then hollowing out your belly. Slide your tailbone back, keep your weight ground into your left buttocks so you don't let the weight go into the inner knee, which will cause damage there. Some of you might have noticed. And then the lead of the chest to come up. You can always pause the video and stay. But return to staff to balance out. If we were doing our shanga, we'd be picking ourselves up, shooting back to chaturanga, jumping back through the dandasana. <laughs> no, we're not. I never was super good at that. I started a little bit late in life, I think, in my late 40s. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale. I could do it pretty much, but was never a, a level of mastery. That's one of the yamas of yoga is honesty. <laughs> Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. Find your strengths and work with them. Find your weaknesses and work with them. So I'm attending to rooting down through this buttock, rolling the right thigh open, breathing down into the low belly, making more space to lengthen forward. The Janu Shirsasana, this is only one, this is, this is um, A, there are actually four of them. No, three of them. And, no, four. No, three. <laughs> Sorry. They're very good for the sacrum. And they're increasingly more challenging. So we'll lift up with a flat back and back to the staff pose, lifting the chest, rolling the shoulders open with a level throat. Now let's take a back bend. So roll back to your back, place your feet next to your hips. Get balanced on the feet and really be honest about whether those toes are pointing forward or not. I don't even know if you guys can still see me. We'll just inhale into the belly, let the breath rise to the chest. Exhale. Let the back be wide, the weight even on the shoulders. If you can rock and clasp, do so. Otherwise, you can take this variation, lower butt. 
Either way, you're grounding down to the upper arm to lift the side ribs so he's even on the center of the back of the head. And you're favoring the inner edges of the feet as you lift your hips up. Notice how your breath flows when you're in this shape. And then swivel down, lengthening one vertebrae at a time. And pause. Now you could do one more back bend just like that, or you could take a full Urdhva Dhanurasana, which I'm going to do now. And you're welcome to do this with me or repeat bridge. For Urdhva Dhanurasana, you take your hands on either side of your head pretty wide if you have tight shoulders. Make sure your elbows are pointing up and not out, and you hug your armpits in to stabilize your back, and then it's just like bridge, you rise up. Come across the shoulders, and then trying to keep those elbows in a line, you stretch all the way up and breathe. Standing on the inner edges of the feet, breathing into the belly, breathing into the hips. Enjoying this big heart opening, and then elbows track the same way they did going up, straight up and down as you roll back and lengthen down. Give the knees a hug, walk from side to side. Now I'm going to invite you to take the shoulder stand sequence. I'm going to do a modified shoulder stand. If you have a blanket handy, you can put it underneath your upper back up to the edge of the shoulder so your neck is not on the blanket, your head is not on the blanket. That decreases the compression in the cervical spine, so it's a very good alternative. And I like to start going back as I'm going to a plow. And then bringing the shoulders closer together make a little shelf with my hands and just take the legs up to a comfortable angle. So I'm not going all the way up and down just yet. And you could stay here the whole time. I've got a lot of weight in my elbows, so it's not in my neck. Establish the free flowing breath. Spread your toes. The legs are long and they're energized, but they're not gripped. Now, after you've been here for a few breaths, you might feel inclined to come up a little higher. To walk your hand up a little higher. You can come up a little more upright. Again, the weight is off the base of the neck, which is really important. And you could really basically stay here indefinitely. Should be quite relaxed. This is a queen. This is a queen of the poses, Sarvangasana, just as headstand is the king. Check in with your breath. This is really good for the thyroid. Then to come out of it, we go into stages, first starting in the plow. See the legs go to the floor, tops of the feet, inner legs, firm legs. Knees to ears. Bones flat. Core controls your downward flow. Hands on your sacrum. Lower legs with control without letting the belly pooch. Press into the elbows to stretch the heart open. Head is flowing back in a nice curve. Stretching out the throat chakra. Counter pose for the shoulder stand. Flushing that thyroid. And then <sighs> Settle into your well deserved, I might add, Sarvant uh, Shavasana or resting pose. And this is where we practice letting go to the force we've been resisting and using to open up. Now we surrender into gravity, into the pull of the mother, the womb, to get quiet to go deep inside and restore our connection to the ground of our nature. Isn't it wonderful that your only task is to relax, to let your limbs grow heavier and heavier, 
even your eyes to sink back. Cheeks to drop, forehead to drop, jaw to drop, tongue to soften. And the breath returns to a gentle and natural rhythm. And the body harmonizes itself in that natural rhythm. And all the energy that we've cultivated in the practice is now evenly distributing to where it's needed, like water that will find those well-prepared irrigation ditches. And you can pause the video on this too for as long as you like, if you have some lovely music, or if you like something under your knees or a little something under your head, or something over your eyes. Or if you need a blanket, if it's chilly, whatever you want to do. The longer you can rest, the better. Otherwise, when you're ready, roll to one side and use your hand to press up so you're not using your neck muscles. Come back to Sukhasana, which is the pose of ease. Sukhasana of ease. That's any mood or your drive to use. Close your eyes, continue to listen to the breath, the natural rhythm, and to the feeling of the heart center. Sumoka, Sumasta, Sukido, Bhavantu. Loka, Sumasta, Sukido, Bhavantu. Loka, Sumasta, Sukido, Bhavantu. May everyone in the world find a way to be established in peace. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be your guide. Namaste. We're attempting to turn off the video.